Is this 8.0? No way. Let's install it now. All right, so we're seeing what is new in 8.0. They've done a brand new media player, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, you can listen to your favorites with the steering wheel controls. So there's some map improvements here. If you swipe down on the navigation button here, you will get an instant um, navigation to your home. There's a charger list, which I think is similar to what it had before, but there's a button there you hit to look at all the available superchargers and destination chargers. Let's see, improved uh, turn list. I used to hate this, and let's see if they've made it better. They say that now the turn order will be in a different, it's been reordered to present the distance to the maneuver first, so it's more intuitive. We'll see if that's good. Also, this new round trip energy estimator will now appear when you're less than 10%. The uh, trip planner has been improved uh, so that you can view the whole trip or you can view your next stop, uh, your next supercharger stop with the press of a button, so that's pretty cool. There's been some voice command improvements, so uh, for instance, now you just tap the, the right hand button on your steering wheel instead of having to hold it down while you give your voice command and another cool thing is that it's going to give you a printout of what you're saying as you're saying it you can now name your trip meters so you can say you know for instance uh, going to grandma's house as one of your trips and it'll remember the name now with the autopilot improvements uh, so we're going to show you that later but basically it's got um, new icons which are easier to read here you can see when it's engaged auto steer when the auto steer is not engaged also now that it's using the radar it's going to be able to show you not only the car in front of you, but hopefully the car in front of that car. So now um, there's an, a cabin overheat protection so that if you leave the car and you have this turned on, it'll keep the car below 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have pets or kids in the car, they won't get too hot. They've also supposedly improved the airflow in the car and they have this new cool feature which accounts for solar heating based on the angle of the sun at your car's location. Another cool improvement for us ex-owners, the Falcon Wing doors will now open and close more quickly. We'll have to find out how quickly for you. Lots of cool stuff to check out. Let's get on the road and check it out for you. Wow, one of the first features we see after this shows the whole battery pack in the bottom of the car. That's cool, we get to see our battery. That's, that's Hi battery, battery. That's never saw you before. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate. Navigate to Route 62 Bill Rucka. Very cool. And I think it shows us a return trip battery. Oh, that's cool. That is neat. It shows you where you are down here. Oh yeah, it used to show it to you up there. Now you've got all that more real estate at the top of the screen for your map, yeah. And so then if you need it, do you just tap up here and it shows it? Supposedly you just tap. Cool. All right, so let's try some uh, auto steer. All right, we're in auto steer. Cool. This is the new 8.0 going along a back road. And normally it was, not that great on back roads, so let's see how it does. Handle that turn pretty nicely. Yeah. And we're coming up to a light, so I'm going to take it out of uh, auto steer. Okay. We're still on kind of back roads. This is a 40 mile an hour road, and normally it wouldn't. It would handle this road pretty well. Um, there'd be a couple spots where it would have trouble, and I'll see if those same spots have the same trouble. up at this next intersection is where it usually had some problems because you see how the road it has this you know the kind of typical mm -hmm. squeeze right here yep. so it sometimes had trouble catching where to go it seems okay on this one at this next intersection we would sometimes have some trouble because there's the line stop for a minute let's see how it does and you can see there's construction being done planned here so there's lots of other lines drawn on the road but it seems to ignore them oh now it's telling me to hold the steering wheel and it's flashing i'm going to take over the wheel there but that was new in this update of 8.0 it, it puts a white ring around the entire nav screen to, to let you know that you should be holding the wheel next time it does that i'm going to let it go okay so normally you would have a problem right here let's see if it does and wow. it did not right over the crest of that hill wow that never never was able to do that before that's pretty cool uh, so that's new 
I would give that a plus one there because that's that's never was able to do it after drift driving over that same place dozens and dozens of times. All right, so we're gonna get on the highway right now and we will test out auto steer on the highway. All right, so now we're back in auto steer on the highway. Let's see how it does. Seems to be doing pretty good. They're breaking up ahead. So let's set the, the distance a little closer, so that way you can potentially see the car in front of the car in front of us. I don't know if you can see that because there's a little bit of reflection here. But I'm gonna go, I'll go to two. Okay. In fact, I'll go to one. I'll go right, right up there, as close as it'll possibly get. Okay. And uh, to make it a little more challenging, let's uh, change lanes and get to the middle lane of the highway. Sounds good. There's cars all around us. so that it can get right up on that tail of that car. Okay. Let's see if it's finding kind of more cars than it normally did. Cars still seem to be appearing and disappearing the way they used to before. Like you'll see that white Chevy on my left, it just popped into my screen. Now there's some braking going on. Oh, and we can see the car in front of the yeah. car in front of us. Yeah, that seemed a lot smoother than it normally would have. Like, that seemed like the kind of braking I would have done. Yeah. This is with the one setting, so we're as close to the car in front of us that as it wants to get. Yeah, I can see the car in front. That is cool. Should I ignore it for auto steer? Sure. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, in a second or two, when uh, it warns me to put my hands on the wheel, I'm going to ignore it. And I'm going to ignore it until it finally gets angry enough at me to lock us out. So we can show you what that looks and sounds like. telling me to hold the steering wheel. It's flashing its white light. So we're ignoring it. We're ignoring it. I think it's going to beep at us soon. So it's more noticeable, the flashing. Yeah, it really caught my eye. And the now flashing's it's, increasing yeah, in, in it's intensity. Just, it's flashing faster. Now it's beeping to tell me to hold the steering wheel. I mean, you'd have to be really asleep to not notice that. Oh, now the beeping got louder. Beeped twice and very loud. It'll start to slow us down if we... Yeah. 
There, it did it. Yep, and now we're slowing down. So it's Dude, basically, it's if I was asleep, if I had been asleep, then that's about the safest thing you could possibly hope for, which is to slowly right. bring me to a stop. And so now it's completely disabled autopilot. Yeah, so now so let's you... try and get back into autopilot. I'm gonna double click, and it will not let me get into autopilot again. It's assuming that I am being a bad driver. So this is perfect. Um, it would mean that I would have to, let's say I really was drowsy right now, it would force me to pull over to the side of the road if I wanted to continue using auto steer. Right. Alright, so we want to get back into autopilot, so we first have to go into park, and now we can go back into drive, and we should be able to get back into autopilot after this. So if I cancel this, and I swipe down, it brings me home. Sorry. I like that feature a lot. Yeah. It's very fast. Jesse's trying out the new new buttons yeah, so here can, for navving. So you can go between north up, which we had before, heading up, which we had before, and trip. Oh, and if you go to heading up, it shows you that we're heading northwest right now. I love this new little icon. That's Oh, and it changes. That's really nice. I like that. Um, and if we had a multi-segmented trip, but, you know, split up between superchargers, um, it would give us another option to be able to see both our entire trip and well, let's do that. Our, okay. Navigate to Augusta, Maine. You don't have to hold down the button. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. I don't have to hold down the button. Yeah. Right, so navigate. songs that Tesla drivers listened to the most in the past week. And we're kicking it off with number 20 from Dea. This is Sit Still, Look Pretty. Wow. I didn't know that all of us Tesla drivers were coming up with the top 20. Awesome. Very interesting. You get a nice picture of what's playing there. 
you can now do DJ commentary, so you can hit that and you can turn off the commentary or turn on the commentary, like we just had commentary basically. Right. So now we can hear commentary, which I think can be nice sometimes. Oh, another big feature on the music player, which I just want to point out, is they've combined the location of the speaker setting with the EQ setting all in one screen, which I love because I used to kind of, you know, first world problem, hate having to switch screens to change the EQ and to change where I'm located in the car. Absolutely. So that was a huge, awesome improvement for me. Well, here, let's listen to some music that we actually own. Oh, cool. And can play. So let's see. If I want a phone. We'll do my phone. I'll find some songs that we have to play for you guys. Let's see. What should we listen to? Some JVA? Sure. Couldn't go and notice here yet. Now I can. remixing as we drive. Oh, you can do both at the same time. Oh, that is cool. How does it handle this? Not well. Yeah. Can I do three? No, I can only do two. Oh, I can do three! Wow. Wow, you can DJ from your car. <laughs> it sounds like we're a mile away from <laughs> where this is being played. Okay guys, so we just finished um, giving the autopilot a test. Seemed to be great. Yeah, I mean my first impressions are that this is actually an improvement over the last version. Definitely. Um, everything felt really smooth, it, it actually handled a teeny bit better on back roads. Um, all the braking and stuff was smooth on the highway. Mm -hmm. um, I love a lot of the new little improvements that they've made to the screen and to the functionality, like having the doors open a little bit faster, which we're going to show you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah, I like the, the changes to the UI. I think that that's an improvement. And I think that a lot of people, there's a lot of negative feedback about about this whole update. Um, Mainly around the media player. Like a lot of people are like, my favorites don't play the same way, blah, blah, And right. I just, I mean, you had a good point earlier about yeah, Facebook. So, I mean, um, when Facebook makes an update, um, people complain about it, no matter what the update is, whether it's an improvement or a disimprovement or any change, people are going to be like, no, this sucks, this is different than what it was. Um, right. And then... It takes some getting used to. Right, and then a month later when they make a new update, they go, oh, I hate this update, I wish it was like it was a day ago, you know, um, so... Yeah. I think that this is just growing pains, but um, I don't know, I have no complaints. Yeah, I have no complaints either. Awesome. All right, so this was our kind of um, first impressions of 8.0. If you have any questions or comments about 8.0, about the Tesla, please leave them below. And thanks again for watching this Now You Know episode. We'll get some more 8.0 updates out to you soon.